For most parents, childcare is the single most expensive expense that they will face when raising their child. If you're looking for ways to save on childcare or reduce your overall cost, then join the millions of other moms wondering the exact same thing. Today's question comes from Ava. She writes, I'm a first time mom and we're super excited to be parents. We've been researching childcare options and we're feeling a lot of sticker shock. We're trying to be budget conscious, but are there any resources we should be looking into. Any advice would be really helpful at this point. Thanks so much. Before we answer Ava's question, if this is the first time you're here, my name is Brianna, fellow mom and money coach, and here we talk about real money and real life. With that, let's dive into today's conversation. Today's episode is gonna be pretty information heavy, so I'm going to lean pretty readily on my notes. The first resource we're gonna talk about is the dependent care tax credit. So you won't actually receive this benefit until you file your tax return. And if you're just already, your head is spinning and you're just like, what is a federal tax credit? Essentially, it reduces the tax that you owe dollar for dollar. So let's say you ended up owing $1,000 in taxes when you go to file your return and you get a credit for $600. So then that means you actually only have to pay $400 in your tax liability. That's just an example of how a credit works. Now, this dependent care tax credit is for parents that have earned income. So you do have to be working a job in which you obtain income for. So if you have a side business that you're not earning income in yet, you may not qualify. This credit provides help by offsetting a portion of childcare expenses that you paid during the tax year. To be eligible for the credit, it is based off of your earned income and any childcare expenses you paid. And the credit is capped based off of this threshold between your income and your expenses. Now, you will need to keep any receipts that you paid for childcare expenses to qualify. If you're looking for more information about the specific tax credit, I do recommend that you speak directly with your tax professional. You can also visit the IRS website at irs.gov. And since we're going through all of this long, detailed information, I'm gonna be linking all of the information in the info box below so you have a one-stop place to go and get it. So. Don't worry about taking notes. I mean, you can take notes if you want to, it won't hurt you, Um, but I'll make sure everything is linked up below. If you're working, you may have some employer-sponsored childcare benefits available to you as an employee. And these are going to vary drastically depending on what your employer offers because these are voluntary programs, so your employer is not required to provide them to you. The first one is a dependent care assistance program, or might be acronym as DCAP, D-C-A-P, or a dependent care flexible spending account, or a DCFSA. Now, the dependent care flexible spending account is like a sub account inside of a flexible spending account. So if you're familiar with a FSA, then that's like a subcategory of the benefit available to you through that program. Both of these options basically function the exact same way. They just go by different names depending on how your employer chooses to provide or like market them to their employees. Essentially, what it does, it allows employees to set aside pre-tax dollars to pay for childcare expenses. And that overall helps by reducing your taxable income. It basically says to the government, hey, this money over here is going to childcare expenses, so you don't have to pay tax on that, is essentially how that works. If you are participating in either of these programs or options, essentially you will elect the amount of your salary to be deducted each paycheck. That amount gets deposited into whichever of these accounts your employer participates in, and then you end up having these um, these accounts that you can use to pay for childcare expenses. Now you may need to keep your receipts and provide them to your HR or show proof to be able to receive reimbursement or depending on the way the accounts are set up, you may be able to actually pay directly from that account for any childcare costs associated with the childcare options you're choosing. There are a couple things to consider when using both of these or either of these options, such as your company specific plans may vary, including contribution limits 
eligible expenses and enrollment deadline. So again, make sure you check with your HR department. There are also contribution limits set by the IRS. So as of this year, the limit is $5,000 for married couples filing jointly on their tax return and $2,500 for single filers or married individuals filing separately. So be aware of that when you're setting up how much you're having removed from your paycheck to go towards either of these accounts. Now, only certain expenses qualify for reimbursement, such as childcare for children under 13. So if you're using childcare expenses for your child that may be over 13, then that situation may not qualify. Now, of course, there are certain rules and other exceptions based off of specific needs. So make sure you look into those if your child does have a different circumstance that may need or require additional childcare for your family situation. These plans do usually have a use it or lose it policy. So in most cases, any unused funds remaining in your account at the end of the year are forfeited. So make sure you're planning accordingly because you don't want to be leaving any money on the table. So be aware of that when you set up or go throughout the year and you're withdrawing money from these accounts. Like if you know you're going to be coming into a season of time where you may not necessarily need these funds anymore, make sure you give yourself enough time time to update your payment that's being withheld from your paycheck to allow you to re to remove and use all of the money and funds left in your account so it can be drained down to zero so you don't have any money left sitting there you know if you know that you're going to come into a season of time where you're not going to be needing child care or being withdrawing money from that account for those expenses another thing to keep in mind is you cannot claim the same expense for both the dcap or the dc fsa and the child tax credit. So when you're going into making this decision, just be aware of that. You might also want to, again, talk to your tax accountant so they can advise you on your specific tax scenario, which option may be best for your unique variables involved. Also talk to your HR department to figure out what plans they offer. Are there contribution limits? Are there certain deadlines, et cetera? And of course, you can always go to irs.gov and look on our website for details specific Specific to a flexible spending account, make sure you look at IRS publication 503, and you can also check out benefits.gov. So lots of options there, but I do feel like the best resource to start with is going to be your HR department and your tax accountant. Now, another option that your employer may offer is on-site daycares. If they offer this, then you may have a discount as an employee to participate in their on-site daycare program. Now, for any of my moms that have more than one child, make sure you ask your child care provider or center if they offer a discount. Some child care centers don't offer a discount at all, while others may offer a discount up to 50%. Discounts, of course, are going to vary. Some do them based off of age, such as a higher discount for younger infants or toddlers, and then no discount for older kids, or they may flip it. Some may offer a sliding scale, so depending on how many kids you have enrolled, maybe the first there's no discount and then the second offers a large discount and then the third, you know, smaller discounts, etc. So make sure you check with your child care provider or center if you haven't already asked. Another resource to look into is child care assistant programs or CCAPs. They might, you might hear this terminology as CAPS. Essentially what it is, it's various programs funded by the federal government, local and state budgets and donations. It is administered typically by states, localities, or nonprofit organizations. So these can be wide and varied. These programs are typically for low income families and they help by providing subsidies to help cover child care costs. Some programs may provide vouchers for families to give directly to their child care programs, but that's all going to be very varied based off of the type of program that's available to you or you may participate in. 
The amount of subsidy that you may qualify for is going to depend on your income, your family size, the type of childcare you choose, and eligibility is going to vary by state. And there is typically an application process, which again is going to be varied because of the different programs involved. One of the best places to go to find information about a CCAP program in your area is going to be childcare.gov, as well as your state's child care resource and referral agency or CCR. R and R. Now this is a different agency than social services. So make sure that you select the correct one for your state. A really simple way to do this is just simply type in child care resources and referral agency, and then whatever your state's name is, or put your state's name at the beginning and then fill the rest out for that search. Another program to look into is a Child Care and Development Fund, or a CCDF. It's a federal grant program. It is also, again, administered by states, territories, and tribes. It is for low-income families, but it provides financial assistance to help pay for child care costs. It allows parents to work not only to be able to receive income, but also any training or education that may be associated for their job. Eligibility requirements for this program is going to vary widely based off of where you live, but to find out more details about this program, you can go to the Administration for Children and Families website. Their website is acf.hhs.gov. You can also go to benefits.gov, or again, you can check with your state or local child care resource and referral agency. If you're looking for additional ways to save on child care costs, you can look into any community grants or scholarships in your area. Again, make sure you're connecting with your local child care resource and referral agency. You can also check childcare.gov. You can also look into a national Association for Education of Young Children, or NAEYC. They do have a website, naeyc.org. They offer tools to help you find child care resources in your area, and they might also offer some financial assistance. Ava, I do know in your question, you didn't specifically identify yourself as being in the military, but for any of my military moms out there, this information is for you. So military families do have some fantastic options for childcare assistance. So here's a quick breakdown of some options. The Military Child Care in Your Neighborhood Program, or MCCYN, it is a Department of Defense and U.S. Coast Guard fee assistance program. It's for active duty service members, including National Guard and Reserves on active duty orders, Department of Defense civilians living overseas, and Coast Guard members. It provides a subsidy to help cover a portion of childcare costs. It's not there to substantially like pay for all of your childcare, just a portion of it. It's specifically for when military run childcare centers are unavailable because of wait lists or distance and the benefit amounts are going to vary. Eligibility is obviously gonna be for my military moms and their families. And it's also gonna be based on your family's income, the type of care you're choosing, the geographical location you're in, and there's usually an application process involved. Now the military branch that you're associated with is going to have their own unique military child care in your neighborhood program or website. I will do my best to include the websites and links that I could find in the info box below. But if you are having trouble finding the correct one, then hopefully you can sync up with whomever your military contact is in your branch of the military to get more information about this program. A couple of other resources for military families include the Child Care Aware of America. They do have a toll free number and an online chat feature at 1-800-424-2246. You can also find them at their website at www.childcareaware.org. Another option is also Military One Source. Their phone number is 800-342-9647 and their website is militaryonesource.mil. Both of these resources provide information for childcare options and financial assistance programs. So if you need either of these resources, at least that information will give you a place to start. 
I know childcare can be really expensive, but hopefully one of the options we discussed today will help you save in childcare costs. But if you know of a tip or resource that I didn't mention, please do myself and other moms a huge favor by adding it to the conversation below. Until we hang out again, create your own heart home.